Greetings, fellow simmers and sufferers of overly complex menu systems. Welcome back to the Flying Doctor channel, the one place that you can go to to help hopefully turn that flight sim confusion into, hmm, yeah, well, slightly less confusion, to be honest. Today, we're going to look at the control systems in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. And I think alongside a whole host of other issues, this control layout has caused more sim pilots rage than anything else. Uh, one first hint, though, is if it gets really bad, just, just stay watching. Don't feel tempted to throw your flight stick out the window. Here's the deal. We've had some fantastic input from people on the channel. It's been so encouraging about what works, what doesn't work as we journey together. And frankly, what should have been explained by a Sobo, but wasn't. So let's just step out, shall we, into the murky skies of the controls menu. Yes, there will be glitches. I'm not sure that this is going to work for everyone. Yes, there will be quirks, but hey, it's great to journey together. Welcome to the Flying Doctor channel. Let's geek into it. So let's start with number one, accessing the control settings from the main menu. If you go up onto the right hand side here, you'll see a cog, press that cog and then this general settings will open out, click on controls and you are in. If you are in a flight, you have the option of going up to the top here and if you click on the controller, you can get into uh, the uh, control section here, but note the sim is still live. Probably the best way to do it is to escape out of it and then click on settings and go in via that way as well. That way you're not trying to adjust the controls whilst the aircraft is still flying, but it's possible, which but it's a bit risky at the same time. Uh, save and go back uh, for me anyway, and then I can resume and jump back into the cockpit. So if I uh, resume, now uh, you can see a problem that I reported here. If you'd like to look at how to solve this in a little bit more detail, then um, you can go back and look at my 10 uh, tips to save you a huge amount of uh, time and frustration, therefore. Um, uh, this is with my, uh, my Rhino stick connected. If you look very carefully, the screen is panning. And what's happening is that there is a signal coming from one of my controls. So my, if you get problems, my first suggestion is that you, you, you re remove all your controls and then plug them in one by one and see what's going on, because that's how I found out that it was my uh, control, control stick. But if I click Escape here, okay, and back into Settings, I can show you how to do that. And then onto Controls, uh, you can see here that I am on uh, SciTech ProFlight X56 Rhino stick. Uh, we'll talk through these device menus, but this is just the emergency stuff uh, at the moment. If you go down to uh, hardware settings and click on here, um, what you'll find is I've done one of them, but I was I've, in the end, I've, I've done this for all of the axes that are available. Um, what's happening is there's a little um, stick here that usually I use to control views, and I think that it's ported some kind of profile in. Um, but what I'm going to do is that I am going to create a dead zone for each of these. Now, I can comment on this later, because what should really happening is that when you trial uh, a particular switch or, um, or an axis, that this white dot should move, but it doesn't. But if I just go here, I've done this before, and if I, if I match all of these to 0.1, Sorry, I know, but this is vital. I think for some people, just do bear with me. We will get onto other settings um, as well. But if you set all of those to 0 0.1, uh, you'll find that it gives you a dead zone that's barely recognizable. It will affect your sensitivity with other axes. I'm not quite sure what this um, little tiny one, what axis this cover this covers. I think it's X and Y, the, the first two here. But if you go back, and save it, you'll find that when I jump back in, uh, when I resume, uh, you should find, yes, it's not moving. And what I'll also find is your mouse works as well. 
Okay, so that is, I felt the need to pop that in. So if your joystick is not showing up, I say joystick, if your controller is not showing up, check that it's plugged in. And by check, I mean actually look and see that it's plugged in. Um, if it's still not showing, uh, you could unplug it and plug it in again. And uh, failing that, one thing I have seen with controllers with something more like erratic behavior is that have a look and see whether your controller is supposed to be into a, in a powered USB hub. Sometimes worth powering them separate from a, a with a powered USB hub, uh, and that kind of it, it, I, I think it it it, impr it can improve the signal. And uh, but yes, you can get some erratic behavior. So that's my suggestion in terms of general control settings. Other than that, um, well, you could resort to prayer. Some of you might know that I have a particular interest in that area, and I would say that well, even though it feels like. At times you're in air rage when things don't work. There are more important things in life. But yeah, you, you might have to resort to prayer or an update. Um, or have a look on the forum. So that's the first one, accessing the control settings. Number two, let's talk about the layout. Um, well, I have to say, I, I do feel that Asobos thought, I'll tell you what, what can we do to play with all of their heads? Let's just redesign the uh, basic controls in the most complicated way and then let's not actually ensure that it works in the way it should. The way that I think it should work is that you should be able to set general controls as a kind of top layer, your universal controls, the big stuff. Um, then you should be able to uh, set controls for helicopters in general and then specific controls as it says here. Um, your devices list is on the left, so your attached peripherals. You've got mouse, and then your mouse will appear if you click on that keyboard. You've got your My Rhino stick for me, whatever you might be using, and throttle again there. And every time you click these, it shows you what settings refer to that instrument. Now, I wish I could say that I had a really good grip and understanding of what the heck is going on with controls here, but I've got to be honest with you, no, I haven't. I have gone right the way back to Flight Simulator Zendesk and had a look how to configure your controllers. I am absolutely bamboozled with this. I've got no clue what is going on. What I can do, however, is come in from experience and say that, uh, that when I've programmed the controls, it almost seems as if that the sim has placed my suggested control in the right place and somehow it fits here and I sometimes I get prompted to record a new profile. I just don't know what is going on. But if I go to filters and click on here and go to assigned, you can see what I mean. So you've got some things I haven't assigned any of these, but you've got some things that are naturally assigned uh, under general. So there's some general things here. Okay, toggle visual assistances display, cockpit quick views right and left and pitch axis and your axis for the view so you've got some stuff that is down as general uh, and the sim has put that there you've got other stuff that is down as helicopters you can see that there and uh, then you've got other controls which are down as specific and to find those I had to go back to no filters down the bottom here I went to something a bit more cryptic. I went to instrument and systems and just clicked on electrics. And if I scroll down here, I can get from helicopters to something called specific here in this list. So presumably what happens is that if you want to, if you want to program, I'm not quite sure why you want to do, you know, battery cover closed, you click in there and it fits in the specific profile and then you're invited to um, save that profile so that's what's going on there as for there used to be a really clear like you you saved this profile you know you, you escape from the sim in 2020 and you come back in if you haven't saved your profile that you know you'd lose it so but it is this is this does seem to be saving stuff or prompting I, I don't know what's going on so that's the best of my understanding there sorry about that we'll get back to business I'm going to show you two controls that you can uh, map uh, right now firstly we're going to look at mapping a gear down and a gear up switch on my rhino throttle here now if you look to the diagram to the right you can see i've got these these are rocker switches okay and so they can go up or down and what i can do is i can program my gear up and my gear down i'm going to try and program this in general controls come what may whatever 
Okay, so we're going to look at that and then I'm going to show you how using the Rhino stick you can uh, dedicate the twist to the rudder axis uh, if you are flying in an aircraft or a helicopter. That's what I'm going to try and do. Um, well, best of British uh, whatever. So let's firstly, this is the way that I do it. Okay, so firstly we have got the right uh, peripheral connect, um, selected here, Rhino Throttle. If you click on search by input at the top here and then you move the button or that you want to program something do, you should see that on the left hand side the button that you are looking for appears. So you should get a name, a label for the button but also it will say if it's attached to anything. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on search by input. What's really important with this is that you do not move the mouse after you've clicked it. I move my mouse all the time and it's really difficult and this is a rookie thing that keeps happening to me. Okay, and I used to get this in Flight Simulator 2020 as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click search by input and I'm going to move my rocker switch up. So we go search by input, rocker switch up and there you go. It says joystick button 10. Okay, if I do that again and I move the rocker switch down, joystick button 11. Now, it's interesting that I've also toggled the lights here, so I'm going to remove that. I wasn't expecting to be able to do that, but the, day, the way that you remove that is you can click on a little cog here, and then you've got a little rubbish bin there. Okay, click on the rubbish bin and it will go. We go back, there we are, and if I do the same again, press down, you'll find it's not assigned to anything. Okay, so um, that's how you remove stray inputs if they happen to be there. But the most important thing that I do now, the easiest thing to do, you can go down all of these categories, but the easiest thing to do is I click on search. And if I type in bra if I type in gear, you'll find that the uh, the the operations you know, relating to the gear appeal here. And I've got gear down and I've got gear up. Okay. And what will happen is if I press my switch up when I click on this, so that's uh, down, sorry, there we are, gear down. So click here to, and it will be scan. Press my rocker switch down, there we go. And that's joystick button 11 now done. If I want to have my gear up, click here, press the rocker switch up, and there we are, those two are assigned. Okay, and so I can just clear that from there now. And uh, uh, what will be really helpful here is if I go back into the search and then I press up and down, or I press up for example, which should be gear up, um, that will appear here when I search by input. So search by input, don't move the mouse, click up, there you go. And not only has the button come up, but also um, what it's assigned to. So we know it's assigned to gear up. So that's number one. And then you can assign anything you want and have the time of your life with all of your buttons as well. I say what's a bit strange is that it, you know, when I, when we click on that button and we uh, we apply it, it seems to apply it to the helicopter controls, uh, you know. And, and so if I go to filters, if I click on filters, so this is no filters, but this is a sign. So what buttons are assigned here? It's telling me that joystick button eleven and attend as assigned to gear up and gear down. So that's what the filter button does on the bottom. Filters assigned, filters essential, so that's going the other way around. And then you can click on, say, lights and see exterior lights, what is applied, nothing there. Okay, and you can go back as well. Instruments and systems, we can see what flight instruments are. So there's very little assigned here at the moment. That's how that's working. But uh, if you click on filters and you move to assigned, you can see what buttons are actually uh, assigned on my uh, throttle itself. Okay. The other thing is I just want to check is a bit strange because these are buttons that are assigned. I want to know what happens if I move my throttle stick here. If I click search by input again, oh, made the same mistake. Search by input and if I push up, what am I going to get? What's it going to show? It's going to show joystick L axis X, but it doesn't appear to be assigned to anything. That is a little bit weird, okay, because I'd expect that to be assigned to the collective. So I'm really not quite sure what is going on there. But uh, this will work. And what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll check everything with you afterwards. 
Now, this little number, the one here, if you see a little number next to something, it, what that means is that it tends to be that the same buttons is applying to two things. It says conflicts one, next flight phase. So this must be a button to do with the career mode or something like that. Ah, so it's saying one and one. Um, so uh, it's the but same button that has happened to be assigned here for cockpit external view mode, joystick button one, which I don't know, is also next flight phase. So yes, I, mean, I would just think, well, I'm not sure on my throttle I want cockpit external view mode so I can get rid of that. You know, don't want it, go away. And uh, there we are, and uh, I can do that as well. Just get rid of it like that. Okay, so um, that's gear up and gear down. Let me show you how to set an axis, which is uh, really important. But if I click back on filters to essential, axis, rudder axis is clear. So there we are. If we want to set that, um, if I click on it, and then if I then move my, uh, if I twist my stick left and right, there you go. And you can see it applying there because I've escaped out of um, the sim, which is working in the background. That's why you can see things moving. If I escaped out and then came back in, that would be different. So that's how to define your axes. And two examples there. So you can just go away to your heart's content. One final thing I think it's worth covering is adjusting sensitivity. We've looked at dead zones before, but adjusting sensitivity. And uh, one reason for this, you can see I've set up to look at the mouse here, is that if I right click on my mouse and look around, things are pretty sensitive. I only have to move my mouse, you know, half a centimeter and I get a lot of movement on the screen. I want to change that. Now, this is theory because I've not seen this work in uh, fact. Uh, when I've been working through the sim, but I can show you how you would do that. So we go and click onto mouse on the devices list, move into hardware settings, uh, and you can see this now familiar um, basic controls uh, layout here. Now here are your sensitivity settings at the top. So if I want a much more gentle sensitivity settings uh, setting, I can move here, say down to minus 0.5, and that way. And that means for um, I will see less... Uh, output from the mouse in terms of movement earlier on if I'm clicking and dragging and then it'll increase uh, later on. That's should, what should happen in theory but it's not really made any difference uh, at all that I can uh, see. So in theory that is what should be happening. We'll just try that again whether it's cockpit interaction I think it's rotate x-axis um, to me but under, under cockpit interaction it's not made a difference as well. But when eventually Sobo sorts out its bugs I think we might be uh, seeing some progress in this area. So I just thought it was important to share it uh, with you. So to conclude, there you have it, a crash course in not crashing while setting up the controls. Thanks to everyone who shared tips and tales of woe about what works, what doesn't, and what should probably be labelled experimental all the way through. And uh, if this video did help, i just point you in the right direction, give it a like. If it didn't, leave a comment about how your sea cow now crouches but also turns on your landing lights or something stupid like that. We've all been there. Thanks for watching. And remember, every glitch is just a feature you haven't learned to love yet. <laughs> what was I on when I wrote the script? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, take care, folks. Stay safe. Thanks for watching.